Hello and welcome back to the Blues Focus channel and today's Opposition View video we're with Steve from the Wednesday week. How are you Steve? Yeah I'm good mate, how are you? Good, yeah I'm good thank you, good thank you, as good as I can be with my team's horrific performances at the moment but I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> Listen, I, feel, I feel your pain, I absolutely yeah. feel your pain. Definitely, so I suppose just um, getting straight into that pain then really. Um, what are your overall thoughts of Sheffield Wednesday season so far? Um, it's been a, it's been a, a slog. It's been a, it's been a, a challenge to sort of pick the optimistic sort of points out of it. But um, you know, we our season started for us really um, at the back end of, of the first lockdown, going into the summer with the points deduction. Um, we've had a lot of uncertainty around where we'd be, um, and, and prior to that sort of minus twelve points being taken away from us, there was there was talk of potentially being dropped down a league anyway um, before that even um, sort of came to fruition. So there was that, that sort of dark cloud hanging over things before we got into the season. Um, yeah. Obviously, um, we get to pre-season and Gary Monk is in, um, who I'm sure you'll be familiar with. Definitely. Um, <laughs> and we, we, we've, we've had, he's inherited a squad last year that he's, he's sort of done little bits with here and there, but there was never really a feeling that it was his team, it was his squad. And as pre-season has come in, he's, it's cleared out a lot of dead wood, a lot of well-established players um, that have taken us to, to sort of Wembley in the past. Um, and he's has had the opportunity to, to, to bring in um, some fresh faces in the playing squad and um, in his coaching team as well. So we, we started quite optimistically, uh, some decent performances at the back end of pre-season at the start of this season. Um, and we were always sort of of the feeling that last year was so bad from Christmas to the end of the season, um, even with minus 12, even if we could be a little bit better um, than we were last year, we, we'd, we'd pluck away at some of the teams around us and sort of dig away at, you know, your Wickhams, your Rotherhams, your Lutons, yeah. uh, and start to chip into those, uh, that, that points deficit. And the first two or three games of the season, we were flying, absolutely flying. I remember, um, yeah. And it was a real positive. We were, you know, we were, we, we were well up for it. We thought we'd be out of... Um, negative points by sort of end of September, early October, and we'd be climbing the league and you know consolidating in in mid table. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's just not transpired like that. Um, I think if I were to use a word to describe our season this year uh, so far, it would probably be enigmatic. Um, <laughs> we, we we'll, we'll we'll pick points up against teams that we shouldn't be picking points up against, and we'll drop points against teams um, that are down at the bottom with us. Um, that shut your Wednesday for you. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you've done the double <laughs> over Bournemouth, which is, you know, it's impressive uh, considering Bournemouth's form this season. Obviously, I know they've recently parted ways with Jason Tindall, but it's still a good squad there on paper. Um, and do you know what? You, you mentioned kind of the, you know, the optimistic start, really. I feel like that happens almost every season for Sheffield Wednesday. First 10 games or so, it feels like you're flying and then just out of nowhere, you just drop. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's yes, yeah. Weird one. Um, we we we've, we've had the optimism over the last few years. Um, I'd, I'd say if we were if we we're going to draw a line in the sand and say we look at our fortunes from Carlos onwards. Obviously, Carlos Cavalio took, yeah. took us to Wembley, got us into the playoffs two years running, um, and then kind of it, it, it all kind of fell away from there. There was no real plan B with Carlos, and mm. I think with hindsight, his reluctance to recycle our squad. Um, it meant that we were carrying a lot of dead wood. Our, our, our squad was really bloated. There were a lot of people on a lot of money, uh, lots of players on lots of money, um, and not necessarily um, being value for that. Um, we, we cut our losses and replaced um, Carlos with a, a, a European coach that had never even seen championship football. And, you know, he yeah. came out in one of his first press conferences and said, I don't want a championship. I'm not bothered. Um, I'll come in. And he was really dour and really sort of, they were dark days. I remember um, him. <laughs> but yeah, Luke, I, um, he, he, he was poor. Um, and it sort of, it, it trickled through into, you know, subsequent appointments. Um, once Luke, I went, obviously we've got Steve Bruce in. Um, the less said about him from a Sheffield Wednesday point of view, um, yeah. the better. Um, he, again, he, he sort of, he, he got us on the verge of something that was really promising. And then, um, he will say that he, he, he's followed his heart sort of thing. Um, again, speculation that um, 
he saw that there were things that weren't quite right behind the scenes at the club and, and maybe moved on when when he, he felt that the time was right. But I feel like it's a bit of both. Of the yeah, potentially, potentially. But um, there, there will always be an ill sort of bit of taste in the mouth. Yeah. Just because of the circumstances around him coming into the club, we gave him sort of six weeks grace to go and have a holiday, go get away because of his personal circumstances. He came in. in um, well, he set us up really well. We we looked like a good team under Bruce, um, and we were really optimistic about the start of last season. Um, and then he just walked, and you know, I, I don't think there's many people in blue and white in Sheffield that will thank him for that or yeah. ever forgive him. I'm not. I'm not surprised, in all honesty. Um, I think. Yeah, obviously you look at the state the club's in at the moment, it's not great. And maybe if he got a sniff of that, then some managers do just kind of jump ship as soon as possible. But then obviously he's a Newcastle fan as well. So I suppose the excuse is there. Um, So, you know, I I suppose you can paint the picture how he wants to, but it's it's hard to ever know the truth uh, behind stuff like that. I mean, it's it's similar to us kind of with the whole Gary Monk thing when we sacked him. They, you know, there was really two sides of the story to that. Um, one side being, you know, he used his agent Featherstone to kind of get money out of players um, and deals like that. And then obviously there's his side, which was he just wanted the best of the club, this, that and the other. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's It's all a bit fishy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. From, from our point of view with Monk... As I said, you get to last the, the, the running joke on our podcast is um, we, we, last season we'd say we were third at Christmas and we just dropped like a stone. Yeah. Um, what went wrong behind the scenes? Um, was it Monk's sort of input? Did he, um, you know, sort of run uh, Bruce's squad into the ground early doors and then have no sort of follow on ideas? We'll, we'll, we'll never really know or understand what was going on. Um, I know there, there was a lot of negativity around what was going on at boardroom level um, from Christmas onwards last season, uh, which won't have helped. Um, but we were, we you know, the start of the season, we started well, as we've said. We weren't very good under, under Gary Monk. Push comes to shove and subsequent yeah. records will show that, that you know, we've got pl- uh, a person in place at the moment that's doing a lot better. Yeah, definitely. And I think, uh, I mean, we were very on and off under Gary, but he did the job he was sort of brought in to do, um, which I think was why it looked like such a good appointment for you guys at the time. You know, someone who's got that points deduction experience knows how yeah. to get out of that situation, but it's just not worked out like that in the end, really, has it? So, um, no, absolutely not. No. Um, I suppose just moving on from that, uh, what players do you feel, or just a particular player that, Blue should look out for on Saturday. I think there's one that comes to mind for me in particular. But <laughs> <laughs> is he is he little and Scottish? By yes, any yes, he is, <laughs> and he's a dirty villa. Um, I say no more. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you see, he, he, the local press have just announced that he's just signed his new contract. So yeah, I saw that. I said, please relegate us. I don't want to play against um, him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he's. He, Again, it can be quite a divisive sort of character in, in and around sort of Sheffield Wednesday fans. He is our talisman. He is the, the, the person that uh, an outside observer observer would go to and say he's the key player. Everything goes through him. And again, as we said, there, when he's on it, he's absolutely unplayable, absolutely phenomenal, yeah. makes us tick. Um, the worry is that everything has to go through him at times. And there are when he when in, when he he's playing and he wants the ball, if he's not happy that he's not getting the ball, he tends to drop deeper and deeper and deeper into that sort of quarterback role, um, mm. and that by definition gets us playing on the back foot a little bit. It, it opens up a, a big sort of gap, a big chunk of, of the pitch between our defence midfield and our attacking players, and that's one of the things that we've really struggled with this season is that link up play between the midfield and the attack. Um, if, if Bannon turns up Saturday and he's hungry and he fancies it, then he'll give you he'll give you an afternoon and you'll have your hands full. Um, yeah. The um, the other one I'd say you'd need to look out for potentially is a young lad that we've got has um, just signed a free contract with Celtic. I like called Liam Shaw. Um, mm-hmm. He's only made it into the first team um, in the last few months. He's he, he's played a handful of games, but um, has grown into sort of being a first team regular. Um, yeah. We are absolutely. We, we don't want to see him go, but he's made his choices and, you know, we can, amongst Wednesday fans, we can argue and discuss 
whether it's right or wrong for him to be moving, um, he will be a, a, an important player for us as well. And I think um, despite our position where we are in the league and the fact that we shipped four goals against Millwall, I think at the minute we've set up really well at the back. We've got a, a strong defence. Um, Dunkley's come in and settled in really, really well. Tom Lees has found a little bit of form again. Um, yeah. And we've got Westwood back in goal. So, you know, if, if, if and when these players come in and gel, um, we're, we're a decent outfit. But as we said, we're, we're a bit of an enigma. Yeah. Which Wednesday will turn up on Saturday. I think on paper, that Wednesday squad shouldn't be where it is. Um, I could make the same argument for us, but you in particular, like I just look at that squad and I think, how, how? <laughs> because even Monk's signings, the freebies, they were good signings. Some of them have... The thing with Monk's signings is they haven't all kicked on. Um, we don't know why Brown isn't getting regular game time. Um, obviously, he's on loan from Chelsea. Um, yeah. Start of the season under Monk. Monk had a style of play that wanted him involved. And then Pulis has come in. Um, and they were, again, they were almost as bad as the Lukai days, if not worse. Um, I was going to say, were, that was that a car was a, crash. A dark period <laughs> when, when Pulis <laughs> came in. And he just, he didn't want to play him. Um, it's not happened for him. Um, Windass, at the minute, is a little bit frustrated not to be in the team. Um, yeah. And... Kachunga as well, you know, we've signed, we've signed some people up front that are just not necessarily the most sort of prolific, if you like, and that's one of the issues that we have. Um, we don't have an out-and-out goal scorer, in spite of the fact that people will look at us and say Jordan Rhodes is a, a big money signing on big, you know, on, on, on a big salary, but it's, it's just not happened for him. Um, I think by the grace of him scoring against Bournemouth, that's earned him another run, but he's coming to the end of his contract now. Um, yeah. He'll move on in the summer. Um, I think one of the things I'd, I'd, I'd say about the league, and I think this is for both of us, is you can go on a run and two, three wins, um, you, you're right up into mid-table. Um, yep, 100%. You know. So I'm looking at Derby now, sitting in the bottom end of mid-table. They, they've been in and around the relegation zone for a long period of time. All season, yeah. Just a couple, just a couple, of, a couple of wins will, will, will get you know a team back up there. Um, I think Wickham are probably gone. Um, I can't see them recovering, so it's any... Any two from sort of six or seven teams down there at the moment that could that could get pulled into it. Definitely, yeah. And uh, I hope for our sakes that's neither of our sides. <laughs> um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if if certainly Blues went down at this point. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? Um, next question would I mean, be. I think, carry I was on. Going to say on that. I, I think the thing is, as a Sheffield Wednesday fan looking at, at the Championship table at the moment. As we said, I think Wickham has gone. You're looking at teams that are being sucked in, like Coventry have started to drop in there. Yeah. Um, other field are, are, are starting to fall. Um, other teams are sort of pushing out. So if you're looking at a profile of teams that you could potentially say, we want that team to go on a full run or that team's struggling, um, you'd probably look at us in the same way that we look at you and say, you know, a big team will drop this year. Um, the neighbours to us, Rotherham, um, are picking up. They're, they're a tidy little outfit. Rob. I don't think they'll go down. I think they'll be all right. Um, yeah. they're, 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 you know, they've got a decent manager in there um, that's got oh, them yeah. doing you know, yeah. little bits. Um, and, you know, he sets them up well, well disciplined. Um, they're doing it on a, an absolute shoestring of a budget as well. Definitely. Um, a, a real lesson in how to sort of consolidate in the championship and hopefully kick off. 100%. I think with Rotherham, I've said it a few times now on the podcast that we do, um, it's their team spirit, I think, that I, I wish... Blues had because I, I don't see that drive and determination from us, unfortunately. Uh, but I, Paul Warren seems like a top guy, uh, a manager that you'd want to fight for. So, um, yeah. no, yeah, I'd, that's, exactly, that's exactly it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's, he's gotten well with Blues fans whenever he's spoken in the press about us. You know, he's spoken about the Who chant that we have um, <laughs> down at St Andrews. <laughs> Whenever there's been a sub, but no, he seems like a great bloke. To be fair, I wouldn't mind having him, having him as Blues manager, but I don't think anyone want to come near us right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. But uh, my next question is: favorite memory on playing Birmingham? I feel like I, I know one in particular for Wednesday point of view. Um, I don't really have any. If if I'm if I'm honest with you, it'd be 
more more the other way, to be perfectly honest, because I associate them with really dour and drab performances, and it's nothing against Birmingham um, per se. It's you know it, it, it's a typical sort of almost like the the Sheffield Wednesday equivalent of the um, the cold Tuesday night in Stoke. You know, we set up. Yeah. Uh, they all they they tend to be quite low low scoring affairs. Um, just from a personal point of view, I've been to a, a been to Hillsborough and watched Birmingham. Um, it's been a nil nil um, or a game that we've dominated. The, the, I think it was nil nil or one all a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. We absolutely dominated the game and it ended up drawing. Um, you know, we fortunately just looking at the form of the last few sort of seasons that we've played against you, I think it's an even split, isn't it? Uh, I think yeah. both on seven um, and drawn six. So you, you know, in terms of a historical form guide um i can't pick it i don't really know what the you know the outcome is going to be on saturday um i can predict what will happen in terms of we are the most we are the team that you would want to play at the moment because we've been a, a, a team of firsts this year um we can got their first win in the championship against us <laughs> sheffield wednesday um robin have never <laughs> beaten sheffield wednesday until this season don't beat us anymore. Uh, Millwall the other day, the other week, had scored something like four goals in however many matches, batter us 4 1. Um, anybody that wants to end a poor run at the minute, Sheffield Wednesday are the team to be doing it against. So, yeah, a little bit of optimism towards. I was going to say, my Sheffield Wednesday mate, um, Ashley, told me about all these kind of records you've got this season. So, um, yeah, no, I was, <laughs> it gives me a bit of hope. <laughs> But I'm still not that hopeful. It just depends whether Karank is in the hot seat for Saturday or not, really. Yeah. Because yeah. um, there is rumours around that. Anyway, you, you, might, you might get the caretaker bounce as well if he does go. Um, you know, somebody coming in and setting up with a, a different sort of, a different face in front of the team, a different sort of mentality, somebody that will go and get them sort of riled up. Um, that'd be something that would probably work in your favour, to be honest. Would be nice, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, memory-wise for you, I'd have probably said the Gary Hooper 2-1 uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago. That just broke my heart into pieces. Uh, one yeah, nil up, yeah. um, all seems well, and then Gary Hooper strikes a double out of nowhere. And that was that was mid-playoff chase towards the end of the season as well. Yeah. If we'd won that yeah. game, we'd have got in the playoff places. And because you won, you ended up getting in the playoff places. Yeah. And that really Brilliant. ruined the rest of our season, that game did. <laughs> And you've never recovered from it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's it's never there's never been a real recovery from that one, but oh well. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, where do you think you'll finish in the league this year? I keep saying, um, I keep tweeting that I think we'll be all right. Um, I've seen enough under Neil Thompson, and I was I was talking to a friend of mine um the other day. Um we aren't going to go on a run. We aren't going to put seven, eight results together. Um, if we win two and lose one and then win another couple, draw one um, and scrape around and pick results up here and there, I think we'll be all right just by the virtue that it's not a very good league. Um, before we didn't play on Saturday, before Tuesday night, we were something, without our points deduction, we were something ridiculous like six, seven points off the playoffs. You know, yeah. you know, the, 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 there's not a massive chasm in terms of the points, and as we've just said, anybody can be drawn into it, and um, people can climb out of it, with the probable exception of Wickham, I think, at the moment, um, who again have been a, a, a decent side to, to sort of watch and, and, and sort of as a neutral cheer on. But um, I just think it's a little bit too big for them. Um, I would take 21st, <laughs> to be oh, honest. At this so stage. would I. <laughs> uh, like to think we can start to put a run together with a little bit more positivity and, and, and push up towards the bottom end of mid table. But you know, I think Saturday is an absolutely crucial game, absolutely pivotal. Definitely, it's it's definitely a, a game game changer, really, this Saturday. And I think a draw is not what anybody wants. No. Um, no. It just doesn't do anyone any favors at all. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, no, I, I honestly think you'll be comfortable in the end, especially with the run you're on under Thompson at the moment. Um, it's not been bad. Uh, so I I feel like you'll be 19th, 20th around that region. Okay. Um, I'm by me. Absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, thing, the, the thing with uh, with Thompson as well is 
he's, he's, he's not the most glamorous. He's not necessarily um, the manager that um, our fans and our supporters would have wanted. But over the last sort of six, eight weeks, he's got the team playing together. We've pulled in some decent results against teams like Bournemouth. Um, you know, the, 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 the squad and, you know, people that have been associated with the club speak really highly of him. Um, I personally see this as a, a effectively a, a sort of a six-month uh, job interview. If, if he, yeah. he keeps us up this season, he will become the manager. And I think that's one of the reasons that um, we didn't necessarily rush out to appoint a manager, even though we were um, allegedly in talks with Paul Cook and we've had one or two other sort of managers that have been associated and linked with the job. Um, it's become apparent now that, um, as that as it sounds, a manager for Sheffield Wednesday isn't the priority. Um, yeah. it's, it's the people <laughs> And, and getting that team over the line day to day, and if he if he manages to keep us up with a, a decent set of results and a decent set of performances, I think very, he may very well be the person that gets the job in this. Definitely, I think if he keeps you up, he's more than earned his chance. At, you know, a stab at management, really. So um, that's more than fair. Um, so I got two more questions left for you. One's a bit of a quick one. This one is for my own curiosity, a bit of a funny question, but do you prefer the current badge you had or the badge you had a few years ago? I prefer the old badge. Um, and I've got a nice, we've got a tidy line of uh, Sheffield Wednesday hats in my household. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, the, the late 80s badge, the, 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 the sort of two, two of the owls. Um, I think the, the current one, although it's traditional and Chan Series brought it in, um, it's a little bit too busy. For me, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of simple, um, just a, a badge that you can associate with the club and see it. As, you know, it just looks attractive. Definitely, I definitely prefer the one you you had a few years ago um, that you had for a long time. The ones with the uh, Sondico kits and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I thought it was simple but nice, tidy. Yeah. Had had an identity to it. So um, yeah, no, completely agree with you there. Just a, just a random one that I thought of, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, just finally, you know, your thoughts on Birmingham and uh, your score predictions. Um, my 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 in laws are all Villa. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, um, not that that's got too much to do with anything, but um, I think it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? That, you know, we talk about teams that. Um, Big, big teams from big cities that have got a, a tradition that have no right being where they are, even though they are rightly in the position that they're in. I don't think Birmingham are a, a team that should be um, 23rd in the championship, despite what the results and the performances say. I think the, the, the status of the club um, is, is, is bigger than that. Um, I think, you know, hopefully, touch wood, we'll see a, a run from both of us that will keep both sides up and you know, if we can consolidate Definitely. towards the end of the season and maybe kick on. Um, both of us get our managerial houses in order. Um, we, we, I think we both, Wednesday fans would tend to feel a little bit of an affinity towards Birmingham because you've been through the same sort of financial issues that we're going through at the moment yeah, and come out the other stuff, side. Stuff with the um, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we, you know, we we could talk for another hour and a half about the stuff that's behind that. Oh, definitely, um, yeah. <laughs> um, it, 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 I'd like to see you scratch your way out of it. I can remember the... Um, was it Zigic about 10 years ago? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Goal. Zigic scored the first, then Paul Caddis scored the second. Yes. That, you know, at, at that point, that was one of those games where you, you sort of pull into the underdog sort of thing. And yeah. Always, since that, I've had a little bit of an affinity for um, Birmingham um, from, from those days. But um, I think you'll be all right. I think you'll stay up. I think and hope that we'll stay up. Um, Saturday. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I can see as I can see as nicking a win. I can. Um, I think yeah. you know a one nil or a two one. Um, I just think the the, the positivity around Bannon signing his new contract that'll get that'll get his chest out and his you know his shoulders back. Um, as always, Thompson Thompson <laughs> tend, yeah Thompson tends to look for the response when we put in a poor performance. We got a response when we played poorly against Millwall. We got a response when we played poorly and lost against um, Coventry. Um, so if, if we go true to form um, and we hit the ground running and we start positively on Saturday, um, yeah, I, I think you'll you'll be in for a bit of an afternoon. Conversely, 
Uh, the first yeah. ball goes out of play. Um, you get the first shot off. Our heads go down. It could be it could be a long afternoon for us as well because we're not necessarily high on confidence when we've got our backs to the wall. Definitely, I think you know. There's I, I, there's a lot of managerial rumours around us at the moment, and whether Karanka is going to stay or go. I honestly think if he stays and is there for the Sheffield Wednesday game, then I do think we'll lose one nil, maybe two nil. Um, I. I'd probably, yeah, uh, probably going off that. I, I, I'm going to say one nil Wednesday, um, unfortunately. But if I feel like if we sat Karanka, although the problems at the club don't completely lie with him, don't get me wrong. You know, they they go higher up than that, really. Um, but this is literally the best we can do at the moment, and the players don't seem to be playing for him or for him anymore. So maybe you know that caretaker bounce could be what we need on Saturday, you know, it either works one way or the other. And I just hope it works in a positive light. If that did happen, we'll see. But yeah. uh, if Karanka's in charge, then I can see a 1-0 Wednesday, really. Um, Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't say the same. <laughs> um, honestly, Steve, it's been great having you on for uh, Opposition Thank View. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Uh, I think everyone who's watched this, you've probably enjoyed it. I certainly have. Uh, definitely go and check out um, the Wednesday Week podcast. And um, while you're at it, in the description, other links that will be there. Check out our Patreon page, uh, some of our other content. We've got plenty of guest interviews coming up at the moment. So we hope you enjoy those. Anyway, it's goodbye from me for now and goodbye from Steve. Thank you very much and keep right on. <laughs>